Welcome to the Coastal Kitchen. I'm Karen Meshures and today we're sort of jumping into spring with some of my favorite things. We're going to have some blue cheese coleslaw that has kale in it. I've roasted a chicken so we can make some fruity chicken salad. We're going to have mint lemonade, orange blossoms for dessert, and one of my favorite things, garlic cheese biscuits. Alright, let's get started. First, we're going to make our own homemade blue cheese. And I have some sour cream. I've got half a cup. We're going to put that right in the bowl. Get it all out of there. We're going to put in a fourth of a cup of apple cider vinegar. Just get it in and give it a good stir around. I'm going to put in a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. All right, and a half a teaspoon of dry mustard. There we go. Some garlic powder. And you can use onion powder or you can use minced onions. And today I'm using some minced onions. And four teaspoons of sugar. Mix that up and now it's time for the electric mixer. Good three minutes. Now it's time to add our first bit of blue cheese. And this is crumbled blue cheese. Going to put it right in and we're going to mix for another minute or two. All right, now it's time to put our mayo in. And I have got, oh, about a cup and a half of mayonnaise. Use your favorite brand. And another minute. Now it's time for our last ingredient, which is some more blue cheese. And I'm going to cut off about two ounces. I want big lumps in here. Just crumbled, about, about two ounces. And I'm going to hand crumble. want it to be real creamy with nice lumps so it really has that wonderful blue cheese flavor. Okay, all crumbled up, and we're going to mix this for another minute. Move it up to high. Just for about 15 seconds, and now we're done. Okay, let's put this over here. Get that out of the way. And... This has to sit in the refrigerator for eight hours before it's melted and, and ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my trusty old mason jar. I'm just going to go around the bowl a little bit and put it right in the jar. I love blue cheese dressing, so uh, I keep it around a whole lot. And what I have done is I've made some up yesterday, so we could have it for today's slaw. And what I'm going to do is put this in the fridge and grab my marinated one. It should be all ready. There we go. Now it's time for the slaw part. And I have cut up already a little, some kale, some red cabbage, and some green cabbage. And we're going to cut up just a little bit more. Let me put this over here. And I've got my red cabbage. And what I want to show you is when you cut your cabbage, and I used a small one on this because it takes about a cup and a half just very thinly 
thinly slice your cabbage. Use a nice sharp knife and then we're going to make about three cuts. Just cut it into thirds because we want some big pieces here. So let's throw this in and I've got my kale done but I wanted to show you when you use kale I take the rib out and do it just like you do collards or uh, a spinach leaf. Just take that right out. Got a couple here. And keep your leaves intact. And all we're going to do is roll this up just a little bit and start chopping. And you want nice bite-sized pieces. doesn't have to be exact. And throw this right in. And the last thing we have to do is I'm going to take a carrot and I'm just going to take my peeler and peel some slices off because I want that for color and taste. And it doesn't matter if they're long pieces, short pieces, anything that works. All right, looks like we've got about enough there. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use my hands and I'm just going to mix all of this up together so it's already in a good mix. All right, before we even start, doesn't that look gorgeous? Okay, and I'm going to take about a cup of blue cheese dressing. And this is the way that you like it. If you like more, it's great. Put it on to your taste. Make sure that everything is covered and saturated with the blue cheese. And this is going to go in the fridge for about an hour before we serve it. Want that blue cheese to really permeate the vegetables. All right, looks like everything is covered. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab me a little fork. I'm going to use a little bit of salt and pepper and season it up just a little bit. Don't want too much pepper on the cabbage because it just makes it a little bit hotter, but that's okay. It does enhance the blue cheese to me. All right, let's take a bite and see how this tastes. Mmm, can't wait. I'm going to get this in the fridge all covered up and then we're going to make our mint lemonade. Okay, time for mint lemonade. And I've got my juicer. I've already done my uh, lemon juice a little bit earlier today. And I am going to um, take my orange first thing and I'm just going to grate the orange peel because I need this for my lemonade. It just adds that wonderful spring citrusy flavor. Make sure you don't go to the pith but get all of the rind off of the orange. The reason I'm doing this right now is because I want the oils to really come out before we put the lemonade mixture on top and of course you know that it's mint lemonade so we're using mint also. Um, I have a simple syrup that I have already made and I used four cups of sugar and three cups of water. Bring it to a boil and melt that sugar down. And I've got that right here. It's cooled and ready to use. So I'm going to bring it over here. Okay? Now, I've got all my lemons done. I'm going to cut these oranges and we're going to juice the oranges. We need four juiced oranges.
get them all cut up here. And away we go. Okay, I love this little contraption because it keeps all the juice right there until I'm ready for it. Okay, now while that's draining, I'm gonna get my mint leaves and I've got them pulled off the stem and I'm just gonna do a rough chop to start and after I get that done, I'm gonna put them in my pestle and we're gonna start crushing mint leaves. So let's get some in. Nice bunch of pressure. You can use a rolling pin, roll them back and forth, make the oils come out, because you definitely want that to uh, permeate the lemonade. All right. Now, let's get that out. And I'm gonna chop them up just a little bit more. And this is going to go right here. We're going to put the lemon juice in the simple syrup. And we're going to put the orange juice in the simple syrup. And we are going to stir it around and get it well mixed together. And while that's resting for a second, I'm going to take my zest of the orange and my mint leaves, put them in the bottom of that big container, and I'm going to pour this mixture right over the top. Now this is going to sit for 10 minutes, and then we're going to cover it and put it in the fridge. All right, this has been sitting for a good 10 minutes now and I'm going to strain it. Want to get all the mint leaves and any possible seeds from any of the juices we put in all strained out. Okay, you can see how much pulp is in the mixture. I'm going to press it to get all of those wonderful flavors out. We are ready to make some lemonade. Okay, let's set this down here, and I'm going to pour this back in my big container and leave just a little bit to make a pitcher of lemonade. And I've got ice water in about one-third, so I'm going to go up another third. Pop that right in there and put some ice in my pitcher because we want it nice and cold. All right, I've got a glass. I'm going to put a slice of lemon right there. I'm going to throw a couple of lemons right in the pitcher. Maybe put a sprig of mint right by my lemon, just for garnish. And let's pour. Okay, while I have a taste of this, we're gonna have a word from our sponsor, Lowe's Foods, and we'll be back in just a few minutes to make our chicken salad. When you start with local produce, Add some homegrown Carolina pride and mix it all with a commitment to family. You get more than a locally based grocery store. You get the taste of home. Lowe's Foods. Lowe's Foods, proud sponsor of the Coastal Kitchen and ATM CTV. Welcome back. You remember that beautiful chicken that I roasted this morning? Well, I have taken it off the bone. I am now cutting it up. And 
when I cooked it, I cooked it at 350 for about an hour and a half. Then I let it rest and cool for about an hour. Um, I wanted all the juices and some of the natural uh, flavors of the chicken that were in the pan to be in my chicken salad. And all I did was put some salt, pepper, um, and a mixture of gar garlic and some uh, herbs that I found at the grocery store. It'll be one of the best chicken salads that you'll ever put in your mouth. So we've got that here. Chicken's ready. I'm gonna put in some onion and I've got a yellow onion and I'm just gonna mix that in. I like a lot of onion but I'm not gonna put as much as I might put in today because I've got some guests coming over and I don't want them to uh, be overwhelmed with some onion. Okay, now I've got some grapes and just want you to see real fast, I've got them cut and quartered, but take the stems off after you wash them and just straight down and across. And that's what my grapes look like. Want a nice bite, but don't want to be too overwhelming and don't want it to burst in the mouth when you're starting to eat it. Okay, so grapes go in. I've got some dried cranberries. You can use craisins if you want. You can use raisins if you want. But I like the color. About a half a cup. And half a cup of pecan pieces. Don't want great big bites. Just enough to make things very interesting. Okay, got all this together. Now it's time for apples. And I have used, <clears throat> I am using a Granny Smith, and I'm going to use half of an apple Granny Smith and half Red Delicious. And all I'm going to do is take it down the center. I'm going to cut the core out. And on the red, I'm just going to cut it in little julienne type pieces, nice and thin, and I'm going to make them just bite-sized type pieces. Okay, in they go. And with my Granny Smith, do the same. Just take out my core and these I'm going to cut just a little larger. This has a little bit more bite and I think it's more fun to eat in larger pieces. Okay, in that goes. And one more thing we've got to chop is our hard-boiled eggs. And I'm just going to chop them in half first. And I like to taste the egg when I have chicken salad. So just place them all down here. And I'm going to slice across in thirds. And now we're going to go back this way. Okay, got some nice pieces there. Throw that in. Pepper. salt. And you can test this out as you make it. Take a bite and see how you like it and you may have to add a little bit more. Celery seed. Key ingredient. Love celery seed. Love it in chicken salad and potato salad. Celery. And grab a lemon here. We're going to put some lemon juice right on top. Give it that freshness. Love it, love it. And now it's time for your mayo. Now, the recipe calls for about a cup, but sometimes you need a little bit more than that. And you're going to mix it all together. Not too heavy on the mayo, but if you like it, and you like a lot, that's up to you. This is where you need an arm to be able to mix it. 
sometimes it's more fun to put your fingers in it. What I'm going to do is I've, I've added two cups to this beautiful big six cups of chicken because that's the way that I like it. I'm going to taste it and see if I need to add any salt and pepper and then it's going in the fridge so I can get all these flavors to marry. Mmm, terrific. Don't need to add a thing. Okay, we'll put this in the fridge and start with our orange blossoms. Okay, orange blossoms. A lot of people think they're just for receptions or weddings, but they're a fun spring thing. Very light and delicate. I love them because I love the flavor orange. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cream our butter and our sugar together. These don't take very long to make either. They really are fast and easy. So I've got 14 tablespoons of butter, which is two sticks minus one tablespoon each. And we're going to blend this until it's creamed together. Take about um, three minutes, four minutes. All right, looking good here. Now it's time for some eggs. So let me grab a big bowl because I've had this one waiting for my egg whites because we do the egg whites and the yellows separately. So let's get that. Okay, number one goes right in there. Keep the whites in the big bowl. All right, number two. All right, one more. Don't get any of the yolk in your egg whites or they won't come up as pretty. Okay, and we're going to blend these egg yolks into the butter sugar mixture. That just takes a sec. Now I've got baking powder and sifted flour and I'm just going to put my baking powder right in here, give it a little stir because we're going to put the dry ingredients and our orange juice in alternatingly. Okay, so a little dry. Get it all mixed in good. And then a little bit of orange juice. me about four, four times doing this to get it the way that I like. Little orange juice. Alright, last little bit of flour. And the batter is coming together. Let's finish with our orange juice. Now, before I finish, I'm going to take my spatula and go around the edge and rim of my bowl because I want to make sure that I get everything combined the way that it's supposed to be. Just make sure you got everything from down on the sides. Okay, now we've got to do our egg whites. I have another lovely mixer and I am going to start with them. Okay, nice stiff peaks. And what I did is I improvised. I had two beaters from two different mixers and I made my own. Okay, now this we're going to fold in to our batter and we're just going to put it all in there. This is what makes it so light and fluffy, delicate. 
We just want to make sure we keep keep it folded instead of stirred and it does take a little bit of effort but well worth it. Okay. All right, all folded in, ready to go here. Now I've got my baking pans ready. And what I did is I've got my baking sheets with my cupcake pans all ready. And this seems like it won't work, but let's get this out of the way. You need to fill the cups just about half an inch, if that, from the top. And you can do this in regular cupcake size or mini cupcake size. We're going to make some of both. I just use a big, big tablespoon and scoop it right in. And you can see how full I've made these cups. Don't be afraid of it. I'm going to make some more in the minis. Okay, we're going to pop these into the oven. It's going to be 375, like I said, about 10 minutes, maybe 12. Let's get that going and we'll have our icing done when they are out of the oven. Okay, let me get some of this stuff out of the way real fast. And icing is really, really simple. Doesn't take any time at all. Orange juice in powdered sugar. Two cups of powdered sugar, sifted. Tablespoon of milk. Two, that was two tablespoons of orange juice, a teaspoon of vanilla, and I'm going to start very slow and I'm just going to whisk around. You may need to add a tad more orange juice, but usually this works out beautifully. Looks gorgeous on the cupcakes too. We're going to let this all mix together, let it set until our cupcakes come out of the oven. We're going to have a word from our sponsor and we'll be back with everything for our lovely lunch. When you start with local produce, add some homegrown Carolina pride and mix it all with a commitment to family, you get more than a locally based grocery store. You get the taste of home. Lowe's Foods. Lowe's Foods, proud sponsor of the Coastal Kitchen and ATM CTV. What a great day. It has been so full of wonderful, delicious smells. We're going to finish up with our orange blossoms. Just giving the icing another little stir. These have come out of the um, oven. They're cooled. See how golden brown they look? And you can tell that filling them up as far as we did only brings them up just a little. Now we're going to just drop it in, give it a little twist. Pull it up, let some of the excess just drain off. Give it a little swirl, flip your wrist, make it lovely. Okay, let's try it one more time just so you can see how I'm doing it. Twist, swizzle, little flip of the wrist, and you can do all sorts of fun things with these. What I like to do is take some icing, just put a dollop of icing in the middle, right there, there we go. Little tiny bit of candied orange peel can go right on top, and I love tweezers for this kind of thing. You don't have to get your hands quite as messy, and we're almost ready to go. Okay, you can see chicken salad blue cheese coleslaw. I've thrown a couple little potato chip sticks on there for good measure. I've got my orange blossoms, my lem lemonade with mint, and I have made some biscuits that come from that lovely seafood place that we're not going to mention. Um, you can search for us on Facebook search for the Coastal Kitchen and you can find our recipes and pictures of all the food that we make on the show. Have a great day and good eating. Make sure it's the way that you like it.